Look, if you go over there again, I'm going to beat your ass. Mm -hmm. You're speaking, right? right? Sing. Well, in the so-called rap industry, those are words that, that are, that are uh, brought out, conveyed in, in, by harmony, by a beat, okay? Yeah. It says to speak, to speak with one another, talk, to speak, to promise, to be spoken, to speak, to lead away, put to flight. And it says nothing about sex. But then this guy went on the word, uh, uh, played on the word commune, and then he went to the word, what, what do uh, communes do? They have sex with each other. They have se you, you, are, you are stretching, my man. Okay, that's why we don't take you guys seriously. Yeah, that's Stretch Armstrong right there. The very essence of the word, let's go back. That's why that's why polite shot out shot up that Bible, man. Cause it, cause them demons are eating his brain cells out, man. He's gonna self destruct pretty soon. All right, it says Sam, you commune. The word there is the bar, the uh, the bar, which uh, commune the bar. H sixteen ninety six means to speak. They were speaking. They were speaking. Now, if you would simply go to the lowest common denominator of the actual word, which is a word root, which we call etymology, then you, then you would notice that there's no etymology section to that word because that didn't come from any other word. Like, for example, Dawa Ba is speaking. Da, the Wa makes it a present tense. What, what would be the root of that? The bar. Okay, what would be the common, lowest common denominator of that? The bar. To speak. That's all it means. It has nothing to do with sex. Okay? Go ahead, Doc. Khan, so now, now that we got that out the way. Um, uh, there's oh, one thing I'd, I'd like to add to uh, Elder Tom. He looked up the definition of uh, new speak which I did as, as well. Um, in Merriam-Webster, it says, for new speak, no, I'm sorry, he looked up the definition of the word etymology, but this is in uh, relation to, new speak is in uh, relation to etymology because this is what's happened, and this is based upon the definition. It says, new speak, speech or writing that uses words in a way that changes their meaning. So that term, new speak, what has happened is the elites of this society, certain words, they have changed their meanings. Yep. All right? And they, uh, that term, newspeak, actually goes back to the movie uh, 1984, which was a, a, fictional, a fictional account, a fictional account based upon reality. The reality is that the elites are really trying to set up a, a so-called New World Order, which is what the movie was based upon. 1984 but in the movie they use the term they introduce the term newspeak then they also introduce when you watch the movie about the dictionaries how they were being changed you had the this right the dictionaries were getting smaller and smaller as the words were losing their uh the the essence the, the words were losing their true meanings like the word gay the word gay doesn't mean sodomite in the truest sense of the word, the word means happy. That's what it means, but it has been changed. Okay? There are many other words. The word rape, the word rape is another example. The word just means to grab, but it's been changed to uh, unlawful sex with a woman. Okay? That's an uh, 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 example of newspeak. So now read newspeak again. It says speech or writing that uses words in a way that changes their meaning, especially to persuade people to think a certain way. So that's why the elites did it. That's why they changed the meaning of words, to get people to think a certain way, to program people. Okay? And, um, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's what's happened to etymology. What's happened to it is, is a, it's become a victim of newspeak. Where it's become corrupted. 
Because, matter, yep, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because even in that movie, the guy was saying uh, it's it's amazing. The uh, yeah, in the movie the 1984, you referenced the destruction of, of, of yep. the language or something like yep. that. I can't remember the exact quote, but something along those lines. The destruction of, of words, you know. And that's one of the reasons why you have to look up words concerning the Bible, because these uh, these devils, these elites, have changed the words. That's the scripture. Uh, uh, his words are smoother than butter and softer than oil, but war was in his heart. That's how Esau has gotten control of, over the whole world, by changing certain words, okay, certain important words. Now, when I looked up etymology, uh, now this is from the Oxford Dictionary, it says, the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. So what's, what's an example of that? Newspeak. Yeah. And we gave you some examples. The word rape, the word gay, you know, and certain other words, man. Yeah, there's another, another word I believe is called neologos, which, is, which is, breaks down to new words, you know, which, which is another way of, 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 of bringing forth or promoting newspeak. Yeah. Right. And, and, and furthermore, we look up the scriptures. The word scripture, it means words. Like when you write a script, you're writing what? A bunch of words. Okay. So the Bible is based upon scripture. So how can you not look up words when you're dealing with words? You guys are just being lazy, man. You know, you're being slothful. At one west, you're being lazy, man. Yeah. You know? You're being slothful. You're being a sluggard. There's a word for you, sluggard, slothful. <laughs> anyway, getting back into this here with the woman was a Greek, right? I'm going to go through this again. Uh, Mark uh, 7, 26. Uh, I'll start at 25. It says, uh, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a side of Phoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would that, that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, we're not going to get into the uh, the 27 and the 28 verse as of yet, we're going to focus on the 26th verse. Okay, the woman was a Greek. I don't know if you went through that already, but I'm going to go to uh, the blue letter, and I'm going to go to G1674. And let me just say this. The blue letter goes off. They go off in their uh, definitions at times. So you have to know when they go off. Let me just listen to that. The, the word there is Helenis, which is the feminine form of Helen. All right? So this would literally mean a, a, a Helen... A Helen in the feminine sense. Because as you go down, damn, I just lost it. Ain't this a, wait a minute. Yeah, Helen niece. And like I said, feminine of Helen. That's right. It says that the definition is a Greek woman. A Gentile woman, not a Jew, Jewess. Now I'm going to go to uh, the etymology, the root, the word, root word, and the word is. Helene, as opposed to was a Helenest, right? Okay, it says here, this is the root of the word, which is G1671, a Greek, either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek island of uh, col uh, colonies. In the widest sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, custom, and learning of Greeks their own. So you had people that 
followed the Hellenistic ways that were not actual so-called Greeks. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. Now that really doesn't give you much to a lot of words. All right. You had Israelites that that uh, that uh, followed the, the, the spoke the Greek language and followed the Greek customs, you know. So it ain't it ain't just doesn't embrace any, any nation. Uh, not uh, it says not not a uh, uh, sense in the widest sense.